Hello everyone, welcome to another Exchange 2019 video. My name is Ed and in this video I'm going to walk you through another attack on Exchange using a module in Metasploit. Please note that this video is for educational purposes only and is to demonstrate how attackers can guess or brute force accounts with weak passwords to get a login to OWA. So on Kali Linux, which I have open here, I've already loaded Metasploit. We're going to be working with the OWA login auxiliary module. Now, this module doesn't perform any kind of hacking or anything else. It takes a word list and a user list, so whatever you define, and it tries to brute force the accounts with the passwords in. For demonstration purposes, I've put in some dummy passwords, some of that are right, some that are not correct. And just to show you that an attacker can gain information such as looking at LinkedIn or any other kind of source to get the email address format. And then they will try first name dot last name or initial surname or whatever the case is to try and brute force accounts and then that way they can try and guess the password now obviously if a password is too complex if it's 30 40 50 characters long with special characters uppercase lowercase that brute forcing is not going to happen anytime soon but there are cases where users do not specify complex passwords they specify their dog's name the the name of their street for example, the season, summer, autumn, winter, spring, uh, or password. Password is still widely used as a password for on user accounts, and that's what makes it easy to brute force. Now, you may be wondering, what has this got to do with anything? Well, once an attacker has got access to an account, and they can then try and use that to get further get into an environment, and like my other videos, maybe you running an exchange server that is not patched, it's on the internet, it's vulnerable, and that way they can escalate their privileges. So what do we need to configure in this module for it to work? So if I come in and I type options, the first thing is we need to specify a pass file, or if you have a single account, you can put in a single account password. I just created a dummy um, word list for passwords. You have to specify the R host, which is the remote exchange server to try and log into the default for port 443 and then a user file that contains a list of usernames. Um, this module is specifically for over 2013, but it works on 2016 and on 2019, as I'll demonstrate now. I've already populated this information uh, to do that. You just go type in set space. Um, user underscore file space with the, the actual path. So for example, there you set the R host, there you set the user file, there you set the pass file. So when I click run, what we can do and what we can see is we can see that it identified the domain name, which is TLab, which is my lab. It then takes the IP or the URL that you specify here, and it tries the combination. So user one with that password, it tells you the server name, successfully logged in. The same with user two, but what's interesting here is that the user needs to change their password. Now, if, uh, if you've created a brand new user account and you've gone and set the password to be changed and next login or the password has to be changed and an attacker can see this they can then go in change the password log into that account set up an inbox rule as you saw with a proxy token attack you can create a hidden inbox rule have all mail forwarded and what this does is it actually tells you that an attacker that listen yeah, these combinations work or these combinations don't work so if you've got a large organization and you've tried this, you might end up with one or two accounts. Remember, this is a lab. This is a dummy exercise, a demo to show you. Obviously, I've got three accounts you can log into here, uh, which is uh, not the case in a real world environment. But it just to prove to you that attackers will try this. And once they do gain access, then we know what happens after that. 
So this is just to demonstrate. Please note, uh, I have full access to do this. This is my own lab. If you want to do this in a production environment for a client, if you're pen testing, you do need authorization to do this. You cannot do this without permission. That is why we are ethical hackers. If you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I thank you very much for watching.